Thank you, Adam. As Adam mentioned, today's presentation will start with a brief overview of the CMS 1500 form, including a timeline. We will then take a look at the top questions we've received about CMS 1500 form requirements and provide links for additional resources. Providers have previously indicated that the unique paperwork requirements currently in the New York State Workers' Compensation System are time consuming and cumbersome to complete. To reduce the administrative burden on providers and encourage participation, the Workers' Compensation Board made the strategic decision to consolidate and eliminate certain medical billing forms and transition to mandatory use of the CMS 1500 form, along with a medical narrative. Moving to the CMS 1500 form will remove a barrier for healthcare providers to participate in the workers' compensation system and ultimately give injured workers more options for treatment. The CMS 1500 initiative applies to medical bills for professional services, as well as durable medical equipment or DME items. It does not apply to institutional or pharmacy billing, although non-network pharmacies may continue to bill using the CMS 1500 form. Now let's review the updated timeline and answer some of the most frequently asked questions about the board's transition to the CMS 1500. Beginning July 1st, 2022, providers must submit the CMS 1500 form. We encourage providers to start using CMS 1500 now. Electronic submission through an XML submission partner is strongly encouraged, though not currently required. When mandatory submission of the CMS 1500 form begins, use of the current medical billing reports, including doctor's initial report, Form C4, and doctor's progress report, Form C4.2, will be discontinued. A full listing of discontinued forms will be discussed later in this presentation. Providers must also prominently report the injured worker's temporary impairment percentage, work status, and causal relationship of the injury at the top of the CMS 1500 form medical narrative. Payers are required to use the new Notice of Treatment Issue Disputed Bill, Form c 81 b and Notice to Healthcare Provider and Injured Worker of the Carrier's Refusal to Pay All or a Portion of a Medical Bill Due to Valuation Objections, Form C8.4, with Applicable Claims Adjustment Reason Codes, or CARC, to object to medical bills. Payers must also provide the EOBs electronically to healthcare providers identifying the same CARC as specified on the Form C8.1 B or Form C8.4. The new forms will be available to view on the board's website in July 2022. And while use of them is mandatory, the board will be extending a grace period through September 19th, 2022. After a review of Forms C8.1 and C8.4, the board determined it would no longer require inclusion of an injured worker's full nine-digit Social Security number as of June 16th, 2021. Instead, only the last four digits of the Social Security number should be included on the form. Payers completing the paper or online version of these forms should provide only the last four digits of the injured worker's Social Security number. The board has developed a medical narrative report template that can be used to create the medical narrative report that accompanies most provider submissions of the CMS 1500 form. The template includes the three mandatory elements to include with narrative. The patient's work status, causal relationship of the injury to the patient's work activities, and temporary impairment percentage. It is imperative to include these three elements to ensure workers receive the treatment and indemnity they are entitled to, and also for prompt payment to the provider. Additionally, a medical narrative report may be found legally defective if these elements are missing. A PDF of the report can be found at wcb.ny.gov slash CMS1500 slash requirements under the medical narrative requirements section. For certain types of medical services or supplies, a medical narrative is not applicable. Instead, an attachment is required. For example, a radiologist should submit the radiological report with the CMS1500 
and a DME supplier should submit the physician order with their bill. A full list of attachment examples may also be found in the requirements section of the website. When the medical narrative template is used, providers must attach a narrative report with examination findings, including the history of the injury or illness, any objective findings based on the clinical evaluation, the diagnosis, assessment of the patient, and the plan of care. In lieu of using the template, the provider's own medical narrative report is acceptable if it includes and prominently displays work status, causal relationship, and temporary impairment percentage. Visit the requirements section at wcb.ny.gov slash CMS1500 for more details. If you are new to the New York State Workers' Compensation System, please register with the board to become an authorized healthcare provider before you start treating and billing for services. To become a board authorized provider, please take the following steps. Step one, sign up to use the New York State Workers' Compensation Board Medical Portal and or log in with the credentials that have been assigned to you. Step two, complete the required training specific to your profession. And step three, complete the new provider authorization request online application. Please note certain urgent care, emergency room, out of state and durable medical equipment providers are not required and some are not eligible to be board authorized for treatment. However, all providers are required to register for XML submission if they choose to bill electronically. To access the medical portal and new provider training, you must have an ny.gov ID. This is not the personal NY.gov ID that you may have with other agencies, such as the Department of Motor Vehicles or the Department of Taxation and Finance. The NY.gov user ID and temporary password will be generated for you when you submit a request for medical portal access. More information is available by visiting the providers page on the board's website at wcb.ny.gov and selecting medical portal under the quick link section. It is important to keep your information up to date with the board. The board does not distinguish between never authorized providers and those who lapse in authorization. Providers must renew every two or three years and sometimes things change during that period, such as addresses, phone numbers, emails, et cetera. To update your information, log into the medical portal. Under the medical provider section, select either new provider authorization request authorization renewal, or update authorization information. So now let's go over some top questions pertaining to the CMS 1500 form that we've received from providers. Question one, where can I find instructions for completing the CMS 1500 form? There are a number of resources on the board's website regarding the CMS 1500 form. PDF examples of CMS 1500 by provider type can be found by visiting wcb.ny.gov and searching CMS 1500 examples. On that same page, there are also sample forms showing how information from the Form C4, Form C4.2, Form C4 AMR, Form C5, Form EC4 NAIR, Form PS4, and form OTPT4 transfer to the CMS 1500 form. Additionally, the CMS 1500 field table matrix gives specific data requirements for each field, as well as business rules associated with some of the fields. I'll discuss some of the key data fields next. Question two, where can I obtain insurer information for billing purposes? You should obtain the employer's name and address from the patient. If they are unaware of the correct entity that they work for, they should contact their human resources office or supervisor. In New York State, employers are required to post the Notice of Compliance Workers' Compensation Law Form C-105 in a conspicuous place in the workplace, identifying the employer's workers' compensation insurance, insurer name, address, phone number, and policy number. 
You may also obtain insurer information by visiting the board's website and searching for employer coverage in the top right-hand corner of the page. Question three, can I send an electronic medical bill through an XML submission partner if I don't know the WCB case number or claim administrator claim number or insurer number? Both the WCB case number and the insurer claim numbers are situational fields and should be populated if known when submitting electronically. The XML submission partner will forward the bill to the correct insurer. There may be instances when the WCB case number is unknown, such as when it is the first medical bill for that claim. Question four. How do I know which clearinghouses are approved CMS 1500 XML submission partners? The board has published a listing of clearinghouses who are interested, testing, or approved to become an XML submission partner for the CMS 1500. Visit the providers page at wcb.ny.gov and select XML form submission under the billing tab of the resources section. Question five, how do I sign up with a clearinghouse? To sign up, please contact one of the approved clearinghouses from the list mentioned in the previous slide. You may call or email them. Please note the board does not endorse any of the XML submission partners who have shown interest in or who have been approved to provide these services. The board has no knowledge of any other aspect of the XML submission partners business. Thus, the board makes no representations or warranties, express or implied, as to any aspect of the XML submission partner's business. Question six, do I need to partner with multiple XML submission partners in order to get my electronic medical bills to all payers? You only need to choose one XML submission partner, but you may partner with multiple if that is preferred. Question seven, do I need to register with the board to start submitting the CMS 1500 and required medical narratives and or attachments? The answer is yes. Before the board will accept electronic submission of CMS 1500 forms through the XML form submission process, healthcare providers must first complete the online medical portal registration process and then accept the terms of the legal agreement by selecting the Agreement for XML Submission of CMS 1500, found under the billing section of the medical portal. Any provider who has already completed an XML submission agreement to submit XML data to the board, for EC4NAIR, for example, does not need to complete a new agreement to begin submitting the CMS 1500 electronically. Question eight, how will I know when my bill has been accepted by the payer? By submitting electronically, there's verifiable acknowledgement data on record to show when the bill was received by the payer. The payer has seven business days to accept or reject the medical bill. Your XML submission partner or clearinghouse will share the acknowledgement date with you for bills that were accepted by the payer. The payer must remit payment or object to the bill within 45 days from the acknowledgement date. If the bill is not sent electronically, the 45-day period starts upon receipt of the bill by the board. Question nine, I received acknowledgement that the payer receives my electronic medical bill. I have not received payment or an EOB explaining why payment was withheld and 45 days have passed. What can I do? Once 45 days have passed subsequent to the payer's acknowledgement of the medical bill, the provider can contact the board's call center at 800-781-2362 to see if there's a legal objection. Bills should not be resubmitted. This will restart the clock and offer the payer another 45 days to respond and pay. Question 10, when submitting form HP1, what should I do if I'm unaware of a legal objection and have not yet received a notice of decision? If there is missing information about whether Form C8.1 has been resolved, providers can contact the board's call center at 800-781-2362 to speak with a representative who can provide the following information. 
whether the Form C8.1 has been resolved, whose favor it was resolved in, and the filing date of the decision. If the call center representative does not have this information, they will forward your call onto a level two reviewer who will have the information. Please note all Form HP1 submissions are now done through onboard limited release. Question 11, how do I know when a legal issue has been resolved and I should be paid and how long should I wait for payment? Providers should receive non-schedule loss of permanent disabilities or PDNSL if they have been placed on notice. An insurer has 30 days to pay from the PDNSL date. If the provider does not get paid within 30 days, they should file form HP1 through onboard limited release. Question 12, will I be able to see patients' medical records through eCase, the board's medical portal, or clearinghouses? Providers do not currently have access to view medical records in eCase since they are not a party to the claim and eCase contains all records related to the claim, not just medical documents. However, we have heard numerous requests from providers to receive access and we're taking these requests into consideration for a new onboard system. You may view any electronic prior authorization requests or PARs submitted through Onboard in the Resolve tab. Clearinghouses provide their own array of services to medical providers with whom they contract. Please confirm services offered directly with the Clearinghouse. Question 13. If I send my medical bill electronically through an XML submission partner to the payer, do I also need to send a copy to the board? The answer is no. When providers submit the CMS 1500 electronically through an XML submission partner, the XML submission partner will submit to the insurer and the board. Question 14, which forms are being discontinued when the CMS 1500 forms become mandatory? The board will replace the following forms with the CMS 1500, and these are listed on your screen. Form C4, EC4, Form C4.1, Form C4.2, and EC4.2, Form C4 AMR and EC4 AMR, Form EC4 NAR, Forms OTPT4, EOTPT4, Form PS4, and Form C5. The CMS 1500 must be submitted with a detailed narrative report to be considered a valid submission. The board has developed a template that providers can use to create the medical narrative report that accompanies provider submissions of the CMS 1500. A sample of the template can be found on the CMS 1500 requirements page. It is important to note that the form C4.3 is not being replaced by the CMS 1500 form. Pursuant to 12 NYCRR 325-1.25B1, bills submitted in any other format after July 1, 2022, including bills submitted on the C4 family of forms, with the exception of the C4.3, shall not be eligible for an award issued through the medical dispute process under the provisions of the workers' compensation law. Question 15, if Form C4.3 is not being replaced by the CMS 1500, will I be able to submit Form C4.3 electronically using an XML submission partner? Although Form C4.3 is not being replaced with the CMS 1500 form, the CMS 1500 can still be used by medical providers who are submitting electronically. However, there are specific guidelines which must be followed when submitting medical bills for permanency evaluation. It is very important that medical providers use either CPT code 99243 or 99245 for permanency evaluation. Code 99245 is used for examinations and reports of non-schedule permanency evaluations. And 99243 is used for examinations and reports of scheduled permanency evaluations. When using either of these CPT codes, they should be the only code billed on the CMS 1500. 
a completed Form C 4.3 should be attached to the CMS 1500 form as a medical narrative attachment. Finally, when billing electronically for permanency evaluations, it is not necessary to separately send Form C4.3 via mail, email, or web upload to the board. There are a number of additional resources available to you on the CMS 1500 form. The first is the CMS 1500 section of the board's website. Visit wcb.ny.gov slash CMS1500. We also have a dedicated mailbox to answer all questions on the CMS 1500 initiative. The email address is cms1500 at wcb.ny.gov. As we continue to work on implementing improvements for healthcare providers, we're committed to increased communication with providers, such as this webinar and targeted email. The board has also created a special web page dedicated to sharing timely updates on various board initiatives with a healthcare provider focus. Visit the board's website at wcb.ny.gov and select the provider update, updates quick link on the provider page. The board also distributes information via our social media channels, so please follow the Workers' Compensation Board on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also sign up to receive workers' compensation news, including information on future webinars straight to your inbox. To sign up, visit the Workers' Compensation Board website, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, and select Get WCB Notifications. Thank you for participating in this webinar on the CMS 1500 initiative. We will now use the rest of our time to take your questions. Thank you, Jen. And yes, the rest of the time we will now take to take your questions. Um, just a reminder, please keep your phone lines muted. We'll be using the chat feature only. Um, I do want to reiterate, we will be providing you with a copy of this slide deck as well as a recording. Please make sure you're signed up to receive email notifications so that you are aware when those are available. As Jen had mentioned, just visit our website, wcb.ny.gov. Scroll to the bottom of the page and select Get WCB Notifications. Uh, we do have a couple questions coming in, so we are going to take a brief period of silence here to answer, uh, to take a look, and then we'll be back with you shortly. Hi, this is Audrey Cunningham from the Medical Director's Office. There's a question with respect to uh, when an HP1 can be filed. Um, an HP1 uh, can be filed um, if a bill has not been paid in full within 45 days of submission. However, an HP1 may not be submitted if there is a C8.1, a notice of treatment issue or dispute uh, from the claim administrator, if that has not yet been re resolved, um, the, the HP1 cannot be filed. There's a question about the effective date for CMS 1500, and that is on uh, July 1st, 2022. And another question also, uh, regarding if you sign up for uh, XML ag agreement to electronically submit, can you still submit the CMS 1500 on paper? And the answer is yes. Um, signing the XML agreement will just get you prepared to uh, electronically submit through a clearinghouse, but it doesn't require you to start right then. There's a question about uh, some of the unique workers' comp elements that are required to be included on the narrative. Specifically, those are work status, temporary impairment percentage, and causal relationship. Those uh, pieces of information are required to be prominently displayed at, uh, on the top of the medical report. There's a question about the HPJ one, the judgment form. Um, those are still submitted as a paper form. The question as to the, uh, the status of an HP1 once it's uploaded. So once an HP1 is filed um, with Onboard, it will be shown on your dashboard on the screen. All right, I see a question here, people asking for the email address. So I'm gonna pull that slide back up. So you have it right there, you can write that down. a question about uh, electronically submitting the CMS 1500, specifically are treatment notes still required? 
So yes, every CMS 1500 that is submitted electronically or on paper requires uh, an attachment, whether that is a medical narrative or if you're a uh, DME provider, it would be the physician's order or like a surgical report or radiological report. So all uh, CMS 1500 um, bills do require a narrative. And I see a question here asking where to receive, where to sign up to receive email updates and reminders. That's right on the board's homepage, wcb.ny.gov. Just scroll to the bottom of the page and there's a button that says uh, get WCB notifications and you can sign up there. A question um, with respect to phase three and what will be happening after July 1st, 2022. Um, so there's two uh, two areas here. The July 1st, 2022 uh, date is for the use of the CMS 1500 form. Um, with respect to the C4, uh, that's referring to phase three of onboard. That is being rolled out on, um, in early May, May 2nd. Um, and that phase is uh, prior authorizations for um, additional prior authorizations for variances uh, and special services. So things that are normally requested now on a C4 um, will be requested uh, via onboard uh, starting May 2nd. Question about the, the time frame within which an HP1 can be filed. And you have 120 days to file an HP1 from, but that depending on how the claim administrator reacted to your bill, that the time frame of when that kicks in varies. It's either at the end of the 45 days that the they had to object if you receive no objection. It's from the date you receive the C8.4 valuation objection, if you receive that, or it's from 30 days after the decision that resolved the legal objection. So it's really 150 days from the resolution of the legal objection. Uh, there's a question if you uh, are submitting electronically through an XML submission partner, and thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, we definitely encourage that. Uh, but if you decide to switch your clearinghouse or XML submission partner, do you need to submit a new agreement? And the answer is no. That one agreement uh, that you uh, sign initially will carry you through um, even any time that you may decide to change an XML submission partner. There's a question uh, regarding uh, filing electronically and uh, whether you would be able to send the narrative reports separately if your billing software can't handle that. Um, the answer is that it depends on which clearinghouse you use. Uh, some clearinghouses that are approved with the board have uh, the capability for you to send those narratives separately from the billing information. So, uh, that question is best uh, answered by speaking with the individual clearinghouses that you may uh, decide to partner with. Hi, there's a question um, with respect to a, I can't find it now. <laughs> a, if a carrier acknowledges a bill and uh, states that payment will be allowed, can an HP1 be filed if payment is not uh, issued within the respective time frame? And the answer is yes, um, as long as it's within the specific 165 days. There's two questions about HP1 submitted through Onboard and the resulting uh, resolution, whether it's an admin award or an arbitration decision. So once you submit the HP1, it will show on your submitted forms tab. but and it will stay on the submitted forms tab. It does not come off once a decision is issued by the board, and that decision will come to you in paper mail the same way it does today. That's not changing because of onboard limited release. Uh, I see a question here, someone asking if we're gonna be offering this uh, presentation again. Uh, we currently don't have another presentation for this specific uh, topic scheduled. 
But as I had mentioned, we will be having a recording, recorded version of this presentation on our website and our YouTube page. So again, just make sure you're signed up for our email notifications so you're aware when those are available. Uh, so there's a question about how do I register to submit my bill uh, electronically through XML, and uh, that is on the medical portal. Uh, once you are registered for the medical portal, there's a button um, on that front page where you'll uh, click it, read the attestation, and you'll be all set to submit electronically. Just want to mention that if you uh, go into the medical portal and that uh, button is not there, that means that it's already been uh, checked and that you've already uh, agreed and, and signed the XML agreement. There's a question regarding the license number and where that needs to be uh, contained. Uh, there is a spot for the license number on the CMS 1500 form. Um, I believe it's in the 24J area uh, near where you would put the NPI. Um, so the, the license number does not need to be on the narrative, uh, but it does need to be on the CMS 1500 form. There's a question uh, regarding how would you know if you are already um, authorized provider or not? Um, so if you uh, are authorized to treat in the workers' comp system, uh, you would find your uh, name um, in our provider search area, or you could certainly um, contact our medical director's office to um, confirm. There's also functionality on our website where you can confirm that you have registered for XML. That's in the CMS 1500 section of the website in the prerequisites. Uh, there's a daily uh, file that's updated, and you can uh, click on that and then search for your name to confirm that you are already signed up and registered to submit through XML. Uh, there's a question about C8.1s where the provider may not have received the 8.1 or may have misplaced it. Um, I, it was addressed earlier in the presentation. You can contact the board's call center, and they can tell you if there was an 8.1 and what the status of it is. Um, there's also a question about um, paper HP1s. And as a reminder, all HP1s should all, must be submitted through onboard limited release. Please do not mail an additional paper copy to the board once you have submitted your HP1 through onboard limited release. Resubmissions of CMS 1500, whether they can be mailed on paper after July, or whether it needs to be sent electronically. Um, so that will de depend on how you have submitted the original bill. Uh, but if you send it electronically and you want to send a resubmission electronically, there is a uh, resubmission field on the CMS 1500. It's field 22. So you would uh, click that box to alert the payer and the board that this is a resubmission. There's a, a question regarding uh, what do I do if a payer will not accept my medical bill electronically through an XML submission partner? Um, we would really like to know about uh, those instances, so please contact us at CMS1500 at wcb.ny.gov, uh, and we will uh, look into the situation. Uh, payers have been required to accept electronic submissions since October 1st of 2021. If they're not doing it, they may be subject to penalties. Just to confirm for everyone, if you're submitting CMS 1500s electronically through a clearinghouse, that gets a copy to the board and the insurance carrier. You don't have to send a separate copy of your medical bill to the board. So there's a, a question about submitting electronically uh, for the CMS 1500. Uh, specifically, what do I do if my clearinghouse is not one of the eight that are approved to submit electronically? Um, the, the one thing that you can do is to contact us at CMS1500 at wcb.ny.gov, and we can do some of the behind-the-scenes legwork for you by contacting the clearinghouses to confirm uh, who they partner with. 
Um, the other thing to know is that um, frequently it's the case that uh, multiple clearing houses may uh, work together to get the bill from the provider to the correct payer. So it, it's common that there's more than one clearing house involved. So uh, again, contact us if you have any questions uh, and we can help you confirm which clearing house would be uh, easiest for you to partner with. There's a question regarding whether uh, PTs and OTs need to report work status, causal relationship, and temporary impairment percentages. Um, they do need to report work status, but they do not uh, report on causal relationship and temporary impairment percentage. We have a uh, chart on the CMS 1500 section of the website that lists the provider types and um, specifically goes through whether each provider type is required to comment on those three areas. So you can find that on our website. There's a question regarding whether there is a paper form available uh, to sign the XML agreement. And um, we do not have a paper form any longer. Uh, Providers do need to log in through the medical portal and then click on that link uh, to electronically sign the attestation. There's a, a question regarding a uh, grace period. Uh, we did mention in the presentation that payers will have a grace period for submitting the new C8.1B and C8.4 forms to object to legal and valuation um, objections for the medical bill. Uh, so they will have until September 19th before we will stop allowing those older forms to uh, be sent in. So that really does not have any bearing on uh, providers. There's a question regarding uh, uh, registering for XML submission partner. Uh, XML submission, uh, each provider uh, does need to uh, submit the XML agreement. Uh, so if you have a group practice with uh, 10 physicians or providers, each one will need to uh, have the XML agreement. And um, there was another question uh, about the XML uh, attestation. Uh, Anyone who is uh, registered for the medical portal um, can log in and sign the XML attestation. You do not need to be a board authorized provider. So for example, a DME supplier or uh, an out of state physician or um, other types of uh, providers or suppliers who are not required to be authorized can use the medical portal and sign the XML attestation. So there's a question about billing and provider delegates. And just, just to clarify, those roles are applicable to onboard limited release and aren't related to XML submission of the CMS 1500. Um, a billing delegate can only prepare HP1, prepare and submit HP1s on behalf of the provider, while a provider delegate can do that and also draft prior authorization requests. So there's really no reason to be both a billing and a provider delegate. Um, if you're going to do both functions, you should be a provider delegate. Thank you, James. Uh, I just want to cop on here and say we are here till 1 o'clock, so any questions you may have, please continue to send them in the chat box. I, we have a question about the C4 auth, and just as a reminder, the C4 auth is will become an obsolete form in about three weeks, and all those requests should go through onboard limited release. All right, that seems to be all the questions we have. So thank you all for joining us and asking some pretty great questions. Thank you to Jen for presenting, and thank you to our subject matter experts here to answer the questions. Uh, before we sign off, I would like to remind you to sign up once again to receive workers' compensation news, including information on future webinars straight to your inbox. Once again, just visit the website at wcb.ny.gov. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and select Get WCB Notification. We also distribute information on social media, so please be sure to follow the board on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. 
And once again, our YouTube page does have recorded versions of previous webinars, including some CMS 1500 webinars if you need any refreshers.